actually making this documentary and I'm doing it about parkour. So let's start on where it started. The sport actually started back in France with two main people. One is Sebastian Fuku and the other one is David Bell. And it then kind of went into a small group called the Yamakazi and then eventually through social media and a lot of other things and then spread across the world. The next steps for parkour could really go anywhere. We've got uh, lots of different opinions and there's a lot of things going on with the Federation International Gymnastique at the moment on whether competition's the next thing to do or not. Um, generally speaking, the community has always been against formal par competitions um, and uh, keeping it as a non-competitive discipline. Um, we're, we're yet to see, but Parkour UK stance is that parkour is a non-competitive uh, discipline. And it's about training, bettering yourself, and it helps people work together better and support each other better when you're not going against each other, in my opinion. Uh, I definitely think the, the next steps for the sport are it's going to become more mainstream. I definitely think it's going to start going into like gyms and it's going to get into more schools and it's just become more popular. Well, parkour is an official sport in the UK. It's been recognised by all of the UK Sports Council, Sport England, Sport Northern Ireland, Sport Wales and Sport Scotland. It's brilliant. We're the first sport to have gone through the entire recognition process and it's an amazing thing. Um, but the future is um, its going to be interesting. Uh, it means that parkour now has access to the same funding and financing as other sports. Um, but we still have to jump through the same hoops to get them. So it's about uh, grassroots participation. So. Uh, Team Kinetics might apply for funding to do a particular project rather than the club being funded to run itself and kind of do with as it pleases. So if we were to run specialist classes for disabled people, specialist classes for ladies, um, specialist classes for older people, or for, 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 for anything, for mental health, we could, but we'd have to apply for funding for those projects rather than saying, hey, we do parkour, give us money. So we, we, we're subject to the same rules as any other sport, um, and, and it's, it's good, but we've still got to do something to get it. I think now that's an official sport, obviously there's going to be access to more funding. If there's access to more funding, that means there'll be more classes. So then that means more people will be practicing parkour. So I think that's going to be one of the yeah. most fundamental changes that you're going to see a lot more people practice, practicing it. So I guess a lot more security guards that are ushering me off are then going to be ushering them off. So they're going to be keeping quite busy. With the recognition of parkour becoming an official sport, it has opened new gateways to funding for the sport, such as the facilities I'm standing in right now. Benefits of parkour are, are massive. Uh, predominantly fitness, confidence, uh, and learning to use your, your environment differently. So if you live on an estate, or you live in a city, or you live in the woods, wherever you live, you can do something in your place. You don't need very, very specialist built areas. There are built areas and there are parkour parks cropping up, which is amazing, uh, especially given that most of the areas we live in are uh, private property and you, you'll often get, certainly for older practitioners, um, teenagers and adults trying to jump on and off the walls, it's heavily frowned upon, whereas if you're three to six year olds are jumping off walls, it's perfectly acceptable because that's what three to six year olds do. And we need to combat that because it's all natural human behavior and it's absolutely normal, not hurting anyone, not damaging your property. But said that, um, it teach people how to use their environment differently and how to have fun anywhere, but more parkour parks would always be a good thing. Um, I myself am I'm based in Essex, and if you go onto Google and type parkour in Essex, the first thing that comes up is Team Kinetics Wine Part of, and we're based in Chelmsford, and we have, if you, so if you're Googling Essex parkour, and Chelmsford is the first thing that comes up, it makes sense to have a parkour park in Chelmsford. And currently there's no parkour park in Chelmsford. There is a massive scene in Chelmsford, but yeah, no parkour park in some of the council are funding it. Looking at the number of people who do parkour in particular areas, Essex has sprang up more parkour parks. We've got one in Hadley, we've got two in, uh, two in Rumford or London Borough Havering. Um, Chelmsford, Braintree, Whitham, any of those towns, Central Essex, Colchester possibly, uh, North Essex. 
um, anywhere that's accessible, anywhere that, that the people can get to. Um, but, but certainly in our area where we are, uh, as Team Kinetics, we have over a thousand members and that's just uh, people that signed up in 2016-17 alone. Um, here we are, spring 2017, and we have no parkour park and no discussion on whether one's going to appear or not. So we're going to start talking to Braintree District Council um, about whether they might have one over there, but Chelmsford's kind of a no-no, but they absolutely need some in the Essex area. We've got one of the biggest parkour communities in the UK, and we need to, to engage that, get people jumping around, get kids doing stuff. I actually found out, guys, parkour is an ever-evolving sport. There are more and more people trying it out every single day. Hopefully there's going to be some more facilities popping up soon, like some parkour parks. So now, there's no reason you can't go and try it out yourself.